Attention, color guard attention, color guard, please, color guard to your post, color guard advance. And salute. Color guard halt, color guard, please post the colors. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Color guard dismissed. Kathy Abate, a second. 
Barb Bainter. All right. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. I call for the election or the election of moderator by nomination. Are there any nominations for moderator? I am Barbara Baker from Willowbrook and I nominate Bob Curley from Long Ray Jones. Okay. A second? Mike uh, Nielsen? Okay. Okay. Um, are there any other nominations? I rise to nominate Carol Sowell for moderator. Your name, please. My name is Julia Beckman. I'm a registered voter from Darien. And I nominate Carol because I know that she's been attending meetings here for many years. She understands the township. She really understands parliamentary procedure. I think she'd make a great moderator. Okay, a second? Second. Your name? Ruth Hodgkin. How do you spell the last name? H O T C H K I N. Okay. Okay. Um, are there any other nominations? Okay. Um, so for the first one, then for uh, the nomination for Bob Berlin, um, <coughs> eyes. Aye. Aye. Okay. And all right. And any uh, opposed? Okay. Now for. And I'm sorry, oh, for Carol Soul. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, hearing the ayes for Bob Berlin. Um, now I would need a, a motion to appoint Bob Berlin as moderator. Jasmine Fuentes. Okay, a second? Okay, Laura Weiss. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, thank you.
in order to get the financial statement of the unit since we just got to put it Give us a second. Financial statements were posted outside. And since you do not have a copy, I am uh, happy to read through it on behalf of the town board and the monitor. Please. Cash on hand, March 1st, 2022, $3,266,077. Receipts, $3,296,158. Expenditures, $2,391,300. Cash on hand, Feb 28, 2023, 4170935 General assistance fund, cash on hand, March 1st, 2022, $85,762. Receipts, $294,861. Expenditures, $102,217. Cash on hand, February 28, 2023, $278,406. Capital Improvement Fund, cash on hand, March 1st, 2022, $95,040, receipts $2,496, expenditures $29,720, $29, cash on hand, February 28, 2023, $67,860. Road and Bridge, Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund, cash on hand, March 1st, 2022, $61,148. Receipts, $38,185. Expenditures, $16,394. Cash on hand, February 28, 2023, $82,939. Road and Bridge Social Security Fund. Cash on hand, March 1st, 2022, $56,040. Receipts, $46,850. Expenditures, $58,715, cash on hand, February 28, 2023, $44,140. Road and Bridge Bone, uh, Bond Escrow Fund, excuse me. Uh, cash on hand, March 1st, 2022, $631,820. Receipts, $3,254. Expenditures, $3,046. Cash on hand, February 28, 2023, $632,020 that uh, completes the uh, financial statement. Yes. Okay. All right, I need a, a motion and a second to approve the financial statement that was just read. I move to approve. Okay. My time. A motion uh, and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> okay, financial statement uh, is approved. And we will move on to a, a resolution authorizing specific powers to the town board. Uh, there should be a copy of that resolution included in the packet. There is. So I need a motion and a second uh, to approve that resolution. And a second. All in favor? Or I'm sorry, any discussion? Yes. Charles Hill from Osmond. This, um, this is uh, vastly increased from.
from the previous list provided. I see he has citations on most of these. And um, some of the citations, I guess, I'm not sure. They're not, they're not all from um, 60 ISEs. Some of them are Sorry, I can't hear you. Can you speak up? Okay, so. Okay, this is a much expanded list from the list from previous years, which usually was around 16 or so items. So uh, there's been no opportunity for us to review these. I do appreciate that you're providing the citations so that it is possible to do that. With the exception of item number 21, which does not have any citation with it, can we get perhaps an explanation of what, and then it's also one of the longer ones, um, can we get perhaps an explanation of the purpose of this and what the, what the intent of including this is?
We'll now move on to uh, presentations from our elected officials. Uh, first, uh, Supervisor Culture. Thank you, Beth, and welcome everybody. Thank you very much for taking time out of your day to come here. Um, I, we are, I, I want to give a couple reports to you on things that we've been doing in the township over the last year. Actually, this is uh, a couple of years long that we've been doing the first one. I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've done with the cemetery and also through general assistance. So um, we'll start off with uh, the cemetery. Um, so a lot of people don't know that we have actually two cemeteries in Downers Grove. We have Oak Hill, which is a, uh, one of the oldest cemeteries in DuPage County. It has people buried there all the way back to the War of 1812. Uh, my wife and I took a stroll through the cemetery. That sounds like a weird thing to say, but we took a stroll through the cemetery the other day um, and found a person that was born in 1795. And I know there are people that were older than that that are buried there as well. So it's been a long time. A lot of the founding uh, families of Downers Grove are buried there. Um, it's been a privately held cemetery. Later on, um, uh, we also got um, Oak Hill, or Oak, uh, Oak Cross, I'm sorry. Uh, Oak Cross also is there. Oddly enough, part of it, uh, both of them are in Lyle Township and part are in Downers Grove Township. But in 1987, the owners of the cemetery came forward, said they wanted to retire. They offered it to Downers Grove Township. Uh, the supervisor at the time owned a funeral home, so he was like, sure, we'll take this. <laughs> and so we have a cemetery. Um, and it's um, been something that we have worked on very hard um, throughout the last few years. Um, it's, it takes a lot to, to get it up to going. So first off, where is it located? It is in Downers Grove off of Elmore Street um, and just uh, to the west of Belmont, uh, a couple blocks in. And um, so there's a map of it right there. Oak Hill is to the farthest to the south. Oak Crest is to the north. Um, Oak Hill is pretty much filled up. There are a couple plots that have not been used yet, but they have been bought. Oak Crest has quite a few plots still left. And in fact, I think we sold 20 last year. Um, so, um, but that's just kind of a, a map of the differences between the two. Um, so I'm going to sort of go through all the things we've taken care of over the last two years. This was the main entrance to Oak Crest Cemetery uh, two years ago. And as you can see, there's been a, there was a lot of uh, trees and bushes and debris that was all over uh, the cemetery. Came out all the way to the road. Um, so, and there are also a lot of dead trees in there um, and invasive weeds. So then um, we have gone ahead and removed quite a bit of the excessive topsoil um, that was in there. A lot of that has been dumped there over the last 20 years when they've been uh, doing graves. So it took quite a bit. I think we've got 18 truck loads or more of dirt that was taken out of there. And we um, put down grass seed and uh, it started to plant it. It's coming back a little nicely right now. Um, this is the east property of Oak Crest. Um, uh, before we leveled the um, soil, and here's the land level and clear of invasive trees. Just want to say we did talk to Illinois Conservation who helped us ID the uh, trees and uh, weeds that were, uh, that could be removed. Uh, we had a lot of buckthorn in there and other invasive weeds that we have taken time to get out. Uh, helping us has been the Boy Scout Troop 99 who was here earlier today and we thank them. Uh, very much for their help, um, but they've come out a couple times and 
helped us pick up stuff um, in the fall. And then uh, the American Legion Post in Lombard um, came out and donated a flag and a flagpole. I um, want to thank uh, Jack Novak, who's a member of that um, legion, and uh, for, for their uh, coming out and doing this. And we dedicated it last June of 2022. Um, we're also going to have a flag day ceremony again June 10th of 2023. It's a Saturday uh, before um, uh, before flag day. It's a couple days before flag day. But uh, it's, it, was, it looks real nice there. We have a monument. Also has a, a light that goes with it. So it's on at night so people can see it. And then finally, I wanted to just also say we've been updating our website, Semify, which is uh, locating graves. Uh, we'll, we'll eventually be able to give everybody's uh, name that's buried there. Also, we'll show uh, plots that are open and eventually uh, people will be able to go ahead and buy um, their uh, plots online. So, and I'll give them a good idea too if they want to go out there and uh, just look around and give them an idea of what's open, what's not open, so that they can do that. Um, we've also helped out because it's, we have a lot of paperwork. I'm sorry. We're trying to get all that stuff taken care of. And um, so um, a lot of people have called and said, hey, I live in Iowa, but I know my grandfather's buried there. You know, can you tell me where he's buried so when we come out there, we can see his grave? And so um, that's been very helpful. Um, hopefully, I believe it's in June, this should go online. So um, you'll be able to find that. So that's a little bit about um, the cemetery. Um, I want to just take a moment for whatever reason, my general assistance person, Sheila, for whatever reason, GA also did the cemetery. I don't know how they got to, together, but she and her family have been very helpful. Lorraine and Mike Khan have also been out there on a pretty regular basis to help clean up. It's a massive, massive job to do, and I really appreciate all that you guys have done for that. So. Um, that's uh, a little bit about the cemetery and what's going on with that. Um, also wanted to uh, give an update on general assistance, which we have done uh, for the past year. So our director of general assistance, uh, Sheila, works with low-income residents of the township providing different types of financial assistance and referrals for people and people's needs. There are a few different types of assistance that we provide. General assistance is a program that provides eligible individuals without income to receive limited financial help once per month. They may be disabled and in the process of applying for social security disability or job searching. If they meet the requirements, they can receive a monthly grant of $400 per month to help with their financial needs until they begin to receive their disability payments or become employed. The grant can be used to pay rent, utilities, food, or gasoline. We also provide emergency assistance. It's financial help for families and individuals with income below 200% of the poverty level. If eligible, we can assist with emergencies such as passing to rent, utilities, or food or gasoline. They can receive assistance once in a 12-month period if they meet the eligibility requirements. In 2022, we provided emergency assistance grants to hundreds of families and individuals. Our township is also a representative for the Salvation Army for Downers Grove residents. If funding is available, we can provide limited assistance for households with emergencies such as rent or utilities. Funding is provided on a quarterly basis. Our GA office, GA office helps our constituents with their applications, including Nightcore NHEA, Nightcore Sharing Program, and Shield of Hearing. Finally, other services we provide include an intake site for applications for low-income home energy assistance program, otherwise known as LIDE. We take these applications beginning September 1st through May 31st of each year. The program helps residents with both their electric and night or gas utilities by giving them credit for each of these bills. There is a statewide program that's administered in DuPage County 
but the township takes applications so residents don't have to drive all the way out to Wheaton. For the past heating season, we have processed over 500 applications. Downers Grove Township is the top intake site for DuPage County. I'm very grateful for all the help that we've gotten on that. Um, if you have any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them. You can call the office and we can help you out. Um, I would actually at this time also like to thank my staff who's here. Um, we all started off pretty much brand new after I started. Um, first day I walked in, I had um, two, two retirement letters on my desk. So we've all started from the very beginning and I kind of learned all this ourselves. And I'm very, very proud of the job that we've done. So I'd like at this time with my staff that's here, if you could stand. And um, Assessor Bolts is not here, but Clerk Grimsby is going to give a report. Assessor Bolts was unexpectedly called out of town. He asked that I thank everyone for coming and uh, that I read this following report for him. 2022 was a successful year and it resulted in a record low number of assessment appeals. 2023 is a general reassessment year and will bring high volume. My office will continue to focus on the following items. We will continue to implement and refine new technology to improve assessment accuracy. We will continue to adapt to a changing real estate market. For transparency, we have continued to look for ways to be transparent. By making more information available on our website, we have, this has led to less phone calls and easier access for our residents. We, uh, for experience and training, we will remain committed to educating our employees and educating our residents on the complicated assessment system in Illinois. Our new employees are all working towards their CIAOs, which is the highest level of certification now. Existing employees will be completing continuing education. Since 2019, there have been five that have become certified Illinois assessing officials. This year is a reassessment year. Every property owner will be getting a change of assessment notice. Please contact my office with any questions. For exemptions, some exemptions have been changed this year. Please contact my office or visit the township website, which is dgtownship.com slash assessors slash exceptions. And for outreach, we will continue to attend homeowners associations, cultural events, legislative sponsored forums, and other community events to help educate and inform residents about real estate assessments. Lastly, thank you for the dedication of the entire assessors team that has been made all, all of this possible. Team members in attendance, would you please stand and be recognized?
fully opening in July of 2022, we have hosted a variety of events and welcomed hundreds of senior citizens to our facility. We offer many types of programs and events ranging from social events, technology, art, and wellness classes to a multitude of educational seminars. Attendees have enjoyed participating in enrichment activities such as book clubs, board games, playing cards, and ping pong groups, making craft projects, musical opportunities, assisting with volunteer projects, and much, much more. Opportunities for learning new skills and gaining access to information relating to aging have been extremely popular. Topics such as senior living options, aging in place, financial information, computer skills, healthy living, and aging with a positive mindset have been extremely well received. We are very grateful to the Friends of Downer Group, Downers Grove Township Seniors for the financial support they continue to provide to support the operational costs related to the programs Downers Grove Township offers. Feedback from attendees has, grown, has been overwhelmingly positive and seniors are appreciative that they have a senior center dedicated to them and they enjoy the variety of offerings available. Attendance is growing rapidly and many programs are reaching maximum capacity and generating waiting lists. A highlight of the past year has been the partnership Downers Grove Township established with the DuPage Senior Citizens Council. DuPage Senior Citizens Council runs a Meals on Wheels program out of the Township Center five days a week. The program began in July 2022 and has catered meals and the catered meals are prepared off-site, prepped in our facility, and then volunteer drivers distribute the meals to 65 homebound residents each week to day. This program not only delivers nutritional meals, but also provides well-being checks on individuals. Oftentimes, these is, this is the only context these residents receive. We are proud to be partners in this important service. DuPage Senior Citizens Council also began offering a community dining program at the Township Center in September 2022. Community dining is offered every Tuesday and Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. for a suggested donation of $5. Hot nutritional meals are served on site in the Senior Center and community members gather to dine together and socialize. Downers Grove Township Senior Advisory Committee meets monthly to evaluate the needs of older adults in the township and to discuss possible, <laughs> possible ways to meet those needs. They serve as advisors to township staff as program and services are developed. This group of professionals also assists with the disseminating information to the centers of influence within each village in the township. These individuals are vital points of contact and assist with communicating township information to all of our residents. Over the past few months, months, senior advisory committee members have participated in training to become dementia friends, becoming better educated on dementia as a whole and how to best work with individuals with dementia. The Senior Services Department has been working diligently to improve communication with older adults in our township. Within this last year, we have developed a monthly newsletter that is sent out by email and distributed in a, print, in a printed form. The newsletter is also distributed at numerous locations throughout the township. This allows residents to receive regular updates about township events and to receive information about senior related services. Individuals look forward to receiving this document each, each month. We have also improved our presence on social media and regularly post township information on our Facebook page and Nextdoor app. Downers Grove Township continues to offer the Dial-A-Ride Shared Ride Transportation Service in partnership with PACE. This, this allows the township residents to travel by bus within township boundaries at a very affordable rate. Human Services staff also continue to regularly assist residents with processing their benefits access application. Individuals meeting certain age, residency, and income requirements are eligible for seniors ride free transit benefits and a Secretary of State license plate discount through the Illinois Department of on Aging. In addition, we assist senior citizen residents with applying for reduced fare permits for RTA and CTA buses and Metro trains. 
helping older adults with transportation options is one of the many services our department provides on a daily basis. We also provide resources and referrals to, to our community members. Our department receives a large volume of phone calls and in-person clients who are looking for information related to food, transportation, housing, financial assistance, and many more. And our staff continues to assist these individuals with all available community resources. Residents should know that a group of dedicated elected Dedicated elected officials, township staff, and volunteers serve them on a daily basis with their best interests in mind. We aim to deliver service in a positive, helpful manner and encourage community members to reach out to the Downers Grove Township Senior Services Center if we can be of any assistance. As you can tell, <laughs> they've been very busy. Um, so thank you very much, and let us know if you have any questions. Uh, and in the state's attorney's office. 
Um, and I, I also uh, want to say that when it comes to criminal justice, it's not just uh, prosecuting cases. Our diversion court is approaching uh, 400 graduates. Our uh, first offender call, Unified for Success, which is the focus courtroom, these are first time nonviolent drug mm -hmm. offenders. There are 1,100 defendants in that courtroom now getting treatment. Uh, and if they complete the program, they have the ability to have their case dismissed and uh, after a period of time expunged. Our mental health court, uh, known as MICAP, uh, remains, in my opinion, one of the best in the country. Our veterans court uh, and our drug court have also been extremely successful. Uh, so we have a number of restorative justice programs uh, that are really win-wins for the community because they help defendants integrate back into the community uh, and move forward. It is a great use of resources um, and uh, we have learned over the years uh, that uh, for certain nonviolent offenders who simply need help, uh, sending them to jail is the wrong approach. Uh, but our approach to violent crime obviously has been different um, and I will say that, uh, also add that uh, I believe we have one of the best public defenders Jeff York, uh, in the state of Illinois, and the system works best when we have states, good state attorneys, good public defenders. We also have an outstanding judiciary. When you put all of that together, uh, that equals justice that everyone can have faith in, and that is why DuPage County remains uh, such a great place to live and raise a family, and why people continue to move here uh, and uh, we're not seeing a lot of houses for sale. The houses uh, that do get put on the market are being sold very quickly. Um, and that's because we have such a great community. Anyone else? that so many people take advantage of in the community. I'd just like to plug that and let you know that you can go there during that period, and all of those dollars are so well appreciated by people that come to these programs, especially post-COVID. So, glad to be part of the community, and thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, please. I'm Linda Painter, and I am uh, one of the DuPage County Forest Preserve Commissioners, and I appreciate everything they do for the Forest Preserve. But also tonight I'm here um, on behalf of Timberlake Civic Association, of which I'm the president of. Timberlake is 780 homes in an unincorporated area in way down the southeast DuPage. But we are totally dependent for our governmental body of the township and the county and the whole township knows me because I call them all the time and we appreciate everything you do for our uh, little area of Timberlake. So thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Okay, at this time uh, I'm going to close the open forum. I want to thank everyone uh, for attending. And uh, can we please have a motion to adjourn? Kathy Abadi, motion in a second. Our baker. 
Let's say, all in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned.